Next question is from James Straffolino. Is it worthwhile to train biceps with heavier loads and lower rep ranges? Oh, great follow-up question. Okay, so it's beneficial to train any muscle mm -hmm. with lower reps and heavier loads. Now, here's the problem with uh, biceps. Most of the bicep exercises that we know are isolation-type exercises. And here's why low reps and heavy weight tends to not work well for biceps is because when you start to load a curl, it stops looking like a curl. It starts looking like some other exercise, and you start to incorporate other body parts. And most people don't have the control or the discipline to go heavy without allowing that type of stuff to happen. So here's how you work around it, and here's what's interesting. We just talked about triceps. We just talked about compound lifts for triceps. For some reason, nobody considers compound bicep lifts. It's almost like they don't exist. Mm. This is totally not true. You do a supinated grip, so palms back grip, chin, chin up, up. Mm. and you do it where you're, you're upright and you're focusing on squeezing the bicep. So what you're not doing is leaning back and trying to get the back squeeze, but you're, you're kind of keeping your body really, really straight and you're squeezing the biceps. You load that for low reps and you watch what happens to your biceps. One of the best exercises I ever did. Uh, for my I, arm. You know, and I also think mm -hmm. that um, the reason why I don't personally worry too much about this is if you're doing uh, singles, doubles, triples uh, of um, heavy compound lifts, like deadlifting and squatting, overhead pressing. Like, Even rowing. Yeah, rowing, right. The, I mean, there's when you do a row with 225 on the bar, there is massive bicep activation happening. Totally. And, and so you only do five reps of that. Mm -hmm. And it, there's great benefits for your back and that, but there's great benefits to your, your arms and that. So I kind of allowed like my heavy compound lifts to take care of the low rep bicep and tricep work and then focus more on isolation exercises and north of, you know, five to six reps yeah. for my for my arms and stuff. But it doesn't mean that those movements don't have value, especially if you're, you're somebody who doesn't heavy barbell row or heavy deadlift or heavy overhead press sometimes, if you don't do those movements, which you should be doing, uh, then, then there's lots more value for that person to do a heavy, you know, three rep, uh, you know, straight bar curl. Although there's lots of room for error and cheating and potential injury for very little benefit, but doesn't mean there's no value in it. Yeah. And if you got yeah. good form, why not? I mean, that's, it is kind of like one of those examples where there's not a lot of options. Like, so that that's a good one that the, you know, supinated grip, uh, chin up um, but yeah loading a, a heavy bar and just doing a few reps of that like it's just like you're gonna have to use too much body english to to really pull that off and, and uh isolating that is pretty difficult so you know there's just some exercise out there more conducive towards that rep range than others and that's just how you gotta yeah. you know I, sift I mean, through it i used to do that. i mean arnold talks about it in his cheat curls yeah cheat curls yeah. Yeah. and um, sure I, some, I, there's some value and to i that. and i used to teach it to advanced clients if i had an advanced client I, i'd teach him uh, treat uh, cheat exercises like that where you can use a little bit of body english to, to get it up but the, the, when I stopped doing that was when I really started heavy compound. When I started training, I never, before you guys, I was never, I never did a single of a deadlift. Yeah. Like that just did not exist mm -hmm. in my training routine. But once I started doing heavy singles, doubles, and triples on these like big compound lifts, like, dude, my tricep, my bicep, like they they definitely got stimulated and blew up from yeah. that. So this is totally not, I mean, you guys are always in the bodybuilding world and, and spectrum. Like for me, like, what we used to set up a lot of times was the sled and with ropes and like as heavy as we possibly could to to pull the oh, rope, yeah. uh, you know, towards you sitting down. That was a fucking killer, right? Arm and bicep workout. Yeah, blow your arms out just doing that, even though it's a back movement. It's a back right? movement. That's what you're doing it for. But you're fried. Yeah, if you're doing really heavy back exercises, those biceps are getting that yeah. heavy load. Well, yeah, I mean, by proxy. I mean, Justin's an example. I think you've probably done curls 10 times your entire life. I mean, most yep. of your, everything you do is compound. Right. And yet you have really well developed arms. You can see this with strength athletes. Look at Olympic lifters, uh, you know, incredible development in their arms and shoulders. Rarely ever do curls. Look at gymnasts. Gymnasts, yeah. They have incredible biceps. They're constantly pulling themselves up. But that chin up that you do or that pull up you do with a supinated grip, you can angle your body and make it more bicep or make it more back. When I'm doing it for back, I tend to stick my chest out, lean back a little bit, and I squeeze my back. When I'm doing, If I do it for biceps, I'm more upright and I'm squeezing my arms and it looks like a shorter range of motion. And let me tell you, it's like I can't think of an exercise that loads the bicep more than something like that. In fact, a lot of people who are really strong at pull-ups, you might not even, you, you probably definitely shouldn't load it. You might need even need some assistance to really make it a bicep exercise because right. it's not easy.